No, oh, what a nice song. Clouds of white. I don't even know if it connects with what I'm going to talk about. But it's. And the dark you've heard it. Yes. Yeah. What a wonderful world, right? Not always. What a wonderful world. What a wonderful world. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking more Frank. Capra, you know Frank Capra that wrote that movie. We all, or many people, watch around the holidays, Christmas time. It's a Wonderful Life with uh, Jimmy Stewart. Great, great movie, and it, it's funny, F folks. Just got back from a, a long weekend. My wife and I, uh, a lot of traveling by car uh, to uh, go to a wedding. Had a great experience at the wedding, and I wanted to share it with you. And I couldn't wait to get home. But then, as I got home, I said, "Wait a minute! I had another experience on Friday." that just blew me away and I was saying that said you know it's kind of like it's a wonderful life you ever had that happen to you now for those of you who've seen the movie it's a wonderful life you know about that uh, uh, Clarence the, with the bell the angel you know that comes down and kind of watches over him well Friday I was having one of those days the kind of days that we all have every once in a while Anything that could go wrong kind of went wrong. You know, a couple appointments didn't show up. The weather was lousy. Things that I thought were happening weren't. And, you know, just, hey, trying to be strong and tough and be positive and keep a smiley face. And finally, by the end of the long day, feeling a little bit defeated, but keeping my head up, keeping the posture going, I was walking out of my building. And there's, a, there's a, a man walking almost side by side with me out of the sliding doors. And uh, I said, oh, excuse me, sir, go ahead. He goes, no, no, you go, fine. And then out of nowhere, he says, uh, you know, nice, nice distinguished looking man, probably in his mid-60s, thin, thin fit. And he says, hey, I know what you're going through. I did that years ago. Now, the guy doesn't know me. I don't know him. I know he's a client of the institute, but I, I, don't, I don't know who he is. He's not my customer. And uh, he, I said, I said, excuse me? He goes, ah, I see you with the suit and the tie. He said, do you do some commuting? I go, oh, yeah, I do a lot of commuting. He goes, let me tell you. Then he goes into this dissertation. He goes, you really got to sit back and look at the stuff that's important in your life, okay? And the thing that makes you passionate or the stuff that you like doing, you need to do that. Because let me tell you, my life got turned, my life got turned upside down about 10 years ago. I was commuting back and forth to New York City. It was stressful. I had to leave 4.30 in the morning, catch the bus, run around. I wasn't happy. Then the best thing that ever happened, I got laid off. And then I got to thinking, what do I really want to do? Because I want to go into business. And he goes on to tell me, I bought a little shoe repair business. I did well with that. Then I, I love photography. It's a, it's a great passion and hobby of mine. I started teaching photography courses and I built up like a little business with that sold that off and then right now I'm just taking it easy he goes but let me tell you it was the best thing that ever happened to me so, so tell me what's your passion now I'm walking out of the building I'm going are you even kidding me I, I said this is the kind of stuff I talk to my you know uh, my audience about all the time on the on the Joe TV and, and the radio show the how to use your life show each week he goes what show I said well I talk about the fact that uh, you know, that, that you should be following your passion or doing something that you enjoy uh, each day, do a little bit more of that. He goes, well, what is it for you? What is it for you? And I told him, I said, well, I like doing this. I like to find a good story and share it. I like the public speaking act, uh, you know, uh, act, uh, uh, end of it. I, I like the radio show. I just like helping people by telling stories about other people that are doing things. He goes, well, then you need to just step back, fella, and take a look at the whole picture and find out if you're out of balance or not. Now, I enjoy what I do, and I do I do a lot of running around, but I'm thinking, this is perfect. Where did this come from? And it's something that we all should and really, really must remember ourselves, is that no matter what's going on in your day, in your life, and there's a lot, it is a wonderful life. It's the only life that you've got. We're not getting out alive anyway. And, you know, someone like me who professes to you each and every day, each and every week, whether it's the quote or the video, it's like, hey, get out there and make the most. It's Mr. Make it a great day. Well, it's true. It's true. And with that, I've taken a step back and I, and, and I thought about that. I said, you know, I've got some ideas for taking this even at another level to promote more, to make more products to help other people 
I'm going to start to do that because no one has to tell me to do it. No one has to tell me to get up early in the morning or stay up late at night and do this kind of thing. So what is it that no one has to tell you what to do? Is it reading? Is it taking a walk? Is it gardening? I don't know what it is. Is it stamp collecting? I don't know. But like my little angel Clarence from It's a Wonderful Life said, the guy, I don't even know who he is. I don't even remember his name. Fella, believe me, look at me. So he says to me, look at me. He goes, I was a lot heavier. I'm fit. I'm thin now. I feel good about what I'm doing. And I found my way because I worked from inside out. Make it a great day. It's the only one. It's the only one you've got.